Good afternoon from Eddie Hamada Field on the campus of Iolani School on a picture perfect day here in Mo'ili'ili. Ili. And welcome to Iolani Live's special presentation of the 56th annual Father Bray Memorial Football Classic. In roughly 20 minutes, we'll have the Iolani Raiders hosting the Kaimiki Bulldogs. Hello everybody, I'm John Tamanaha, Director of Interactive Media here at Iolani School, alongside Ivan Suzuki, and Eric Perkins, who are both teachers in our lower school and our resident football experts. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hi, thanks, John. Thanks for having us back again. It's a beautiful day for football. Looking forward to this great matchup between our neighboring schools. Absolutely, Ivan. Eric, any thoughts? Yeah, it's a great day to play football. The teams look ready and a great way to start off uh, our school year. School hasn't happened. School won't ha open until a couple of days on Monday. You guys ready? Oh, yeah. I have a new partner. I'm looking forward to working with him. <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck there, Mrs. Suzuki. Uh, this past week was filled with orientations of all sorts, uh, new students, new faculty members on campus. And on Thursday, there was a faculty day, the first faculty day in our school's history to get everybody up to speed. And that was a wonderful experience to go through and we've been here a while but for the new people to learn about our school must have been amazing in yeah, that fashion. Probably overwhelming but I think they really enjoyed it. It's something different that I don't think they had at their previous schools. And then the um, one of the main things that they learned about Eric was one team over and over again in all sorts of different forms and all sorts of different activities and one team, obviously, is the basis for the Father Bray ethos, and we are here at the Father Bray game. And at halftime, we're going to celebrate three individuals who carry on that legacy. And their names are Walter Luke of the class of 53, Sari Uechi of the class of 86, and Willie Keolo of the class of 73. And here's a short video that will help you get to know them a little bit. I've always felt close to Father Bray to win an award that has Father Bray name on top is so humbling. When I got accepted to Ilani, I didn't know anyone. So I wanted, I wanted to make some friends. So I went out for the JV football. I was 105 pounds, not athletic, too slow, too small. So I knew I wasn't gonna make the team. And very shortly, I was cut from the JV squad, but um, the coach liked my attitude, so he asked me to be a manager for the team. So I was his father for three years, and I got to know him really, really well. Father was always very strong on one team. You gotta give your, your all, your heart and soul to the team, and you gotta recognize those that are, those that are good and those that are better than you, and it's okay because you, you learn from those that are better than you by playing with them. And I think the thing that Ilani did for me, I learned uh, humbleness, teamwork, that you can't do it alone. I was a principal at, a, at three elementary schools for about 28 years. I love my job, love, love the students. My, my teachers trusted me. I got three awards. I was employee of the year, one year, and I won the Milken Award, and now I'm getting this award. I feel really proud, but you, you can't do it yourself. You got, you got to have the team. And when I think about Father Bray and one team, they're syn synonymous. So I'm so happy that Ilani adopted one team as the, um, the model. I started Iolani in seventh grade, you know, back then. Everything about Iolani was new, including Iolani football, right? And so we used to go with another family to the games at the Aloha Stadium. You know, Iolani played in the prep bowl, right? And we tied. But at that game, you know, um, when it was done, you know, my auntie gave me this lay. And she said, like, hey, walk down there and see if you can give it to Mr. Hamada. And then I was able to get his attention, even though I don't think he knew who I was, but then I offered him this lay. And, you know, in his polite and, and humble way, he said, you know, uh, you know, I'm, I really appreciate the gesture, you know, tell your auntie thanks, but unless she has enough for, you know, my whole team, I can't accept this. That was what the one team was about, right? That, that you know, yes, he's the coach, but, you know, everybody in their own role is equally important to that, that team's success. 
You know, playing sports at Iolani, I really got the one team philosophy from the athlete's point of view. I think I wore a lot of shoes. I mean, I was like the reserve that never went in. You know, I was like maybe in basketball, like the sixth man, um, became a starter. Uh, I was even a team captain in my senior year in a varsity team. So I knew what it felt like to be one team as a player, but I think now it's different. Like now I'm a parent. One of my children has graduated, two others still attend. Now they don't know Mr. Hamada. You know, Mr. Hamada was like my father brave figure. So I think for it to stay relevant and for it to be impactful for the next generation, our kids and our players have to be able to see Father Bray in someone, to see Eddie Hamada in someone, to see, you know, Ann Kang in someone. They have to be able to see what it meant for the one team spirit to be tangible to them, right? So that they can do it, right? And then they can live it. Part of being on one team is you, you make a commitment, right? So you make a commitment to the team to put the team's best interests at heart. So uh, my sophomore year was a great example. I mean, I, I was an offensive specialist, but my sophomore year, Coach Romano told Guy Ching and I, you're gonna play defensive end. We're gonna put you on the, on the kickoff team. You're gonna be on the punt team. We were never played defensive and we never ran down for a punt or, or a kickoff. It's not an easy thing to do sometimes because you're gonna, you're gonna have to accept roles that may not suit you, but it's something that you do because without those different roles, the team cannot meet or achieve its goals. You know, I was thinking about that too because uh, I looked at the alma, alma mater. To me, the alma mater is something that resonates with me because it's, I don't know because I've sang it over a thousand times since I was in the fourth grade, or because the words like, you know, loyalty and love, uh, having faith, um, bound by bonds that cannot be severed. I mean, those are pretty powerful words, yeah? and that talks to being on a team, a one team kind of attitude, yeah. That's something that I've learned and, yeah, hopefully I've, I've carried it on in my life. and. Um, passed on to other people. Hope you enjoyed that look at our three Father Bray honorees. Thanks to our uh, Dane Koihara and our Communications and Media Services and Online Relations, Relations Department for our work on that. Let's turn things over to our public address announcer, Kyle Miyamoto, as we get set for the National Anthem and Hoi Ponoi sung by Hiroto Nawano. Yeah. Okay. 
Great job by Hiroto Nawano, sophomore, class of 22, with the anthem and Hawaii Pono'i. Then the impressive rendition by their alma mater, the Kaimiki Bulldogs, and then the Yolani Marching Band with the Yolani alma mater. They're getting set for football. This is a non-league game between Division One Yolani Raiders and Division Two Kaimiki Bulldogs. So this will not count in the race for state births and whatnot. But it is a, an interesting game because we're separated now with our campus expansion by just a few yards from one corner of Kaimiki High School to the co corner of Iolani School. It's fun for these two teams to get, get together. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a diff different situation, you know, going from a, they already had two regular season games going into a exhibition game you know how do you prepare for something like that um, for on both sides so we'll see how how teams come out and you know it should be an exciting game looking at the Raider team captains you've got Micah Kamat number five Jonah Chong number 11 and Alana Kila Pei number 23 and Eric if we think back to last year's Father Bray game in the first quarter, Lana Kila Pei had an amazing first quarter. One you might, I don't know, it was a quarter for the ages in my book. He had two interceptions, one he returned for a touchdown. He had a fumble recovery, he returned that for 59 yards to set up another score. Iolani burst ahead of Waipahu, who went ahead to win the Division I state championship 28 to nothing. And, um, but Lana Kila Pei, tell us about that, uh, that ball player yeah he's definitely the leader on the defense um, you can line him up anywhere um, he's a he's a safety by trade a hybrid 
rover. He can play on the edge, rush the quarterback. He can blitz from anywhere on the field. He can play an outside linebacker position. So they'll line him up wherever they need him, and he'll be that playmaker on uh, Coach Delbert Tangon's defense. The Raiders won the toss. They will elect to receive. They will go from the Eva end to the Diamond Head end here at Eddie Hamada Field, which is absolutely beautiful and in a tip-top shape if you're watching this on a I don't know medium resolution or even high resolution screen you might think that we're playing on a artificial surface but this is indeed natural grass Kevin Lopes and his crew do a fabulous job which includes as you see right there painting the eye shield and the Yelani one team ward mark at the center of the field Great job by those guys, not just with this field, but all the fields here on campus. Getting set to kick off will be the Bulldogs. Back for the Raiders. Number one, Brock Kidani to the far side. And Lanaki LaPay here to the near side. Yeah, Yolani's going to, uh, they de decided to uh, get the ball to start. They want to just start getting their tempo going, maybe try to wear out these Bulldogs. This is Kurt Kawamoto to get us started here. And the 56th Father Bray Memorial Football Classic is underway. The kick is short and fielded by Jedidaya Wataru. And that'll set up the Raiders with good field position for the initial series here. Yeah, he actually returned it and took a knee. Refs didn't see it, and he still got hit. <laughs> yeah. It'll be first and 10 for the Raiders at their own 34. Jonah Chong with Brody Bantolina in the backfield. Three receivers to his right. Chong looking that way. Throws one off of the hands of Wailoa Manuel. Yeah, good play. They just a little high. Wailoa, who's a great athlete, usually can get those. Yeah. It was an incompletion. That'll make it second and 10. Two receivers either side of Chong. This time he'll give it to Bantolina and he's wrapped up at the line of scrimmage or maybe behind it. Yeah, Kamuki read that one all the way, had the safety coming up into the box and filled that hole real fast along with the D-line. Now Ilani's in an obvious passing situation here, so Kamuki can play back on that and see if they want to bring extra pressure or drop extra guys. The Raider offensive line is Kilo Scanlon, Tristan Kim, Rain Posse, Chase Kato, and Brandon Chin from left to right. Passing situation... Third and 12. Chong looking long. Trying to find Noah Gowdy. That falls incomplete. Yeah, Ilani's two incompletions were, I think both receivers were open. Good decision made by the quarterback. We just got to bring those in and complete those in. That's going to be the key to today's game. Wailoa Manuel who was an intended receiver on first down, will punt it away. It's a good end over end kick. See if it gets a good Raider bounce, it does. And that'll stop short of the 20 yard line, right about the 21 yard line. Down there by Max and Miyashiro. And we'll get our first look at the Kaimaki Bulldogs on offense. Kaimuki's roster in the high 20s, so you're going to see a lot of guys going both ways and uh, see how they hang through this day out here against the Iolani guys. Trotting out with the controls of the Bulldog offense is their quarterback. He transferred from Las Vegas, Jaden Mayava, highly touted quarterback, joined in the backfield by Nasumas Aseua Fuala Laau. Fake to fool out, ball complete to number 44, Faasoa. Jonah Faasoa rumbling and stumbling. Gets knocked down by Micah Kamat, but not before he gets to nearly 
the Raider 35 yard line. Uh oh, that's how Kamaki wanted to start it on a run pass option, RPO, our defense red run, and he slipped the guy through and made a nice play. You know, Fa Soul was last year's Kaimaki quarterback. Then with the transfer of Mayava, he is a split end of sorts. This is the give to Pula Ao. He steps out of bounds, but not before picking up a Bulldog first down. Ilani's defense is going to have to set that edge a little harder, force that runner to bounce it a little more or, or stuff it in. Fulaau coming into the game. 230 yards rushing on 29 carries. Gentlemen, that is nearly a eight yard average. We're seeing his talent here early in the fourth quarter. Here he is again, but the Raiders are there, swarming to the ball. Much better play on that one. Had the outside linebacker, Rover, come up, force him to the outside while the pursuit help comes. Sterling Sakashita there on the initial contact. Five foot 11, 165 pound sophomore. Yeah, I think that's what they need to do is they can't have them go north south. When they have to go east to west, we have a better uh, chance of stopping them on the run. That was a loss of four on the play. This is second and 14 from the 25. Fuala Ao with it. And he picks up good yardage, set up a third and manageable. Yeah, that was a good play call, a good chunk of yards on there to, to make it less obvious of a passing situation. Sterling with the uh, initial contact there again. Yeah, maybe two down territory for them, for the Bulldogs. So I got to be third and maybe a long-ish eight. Three wide receivers to Mayava's right. He'll look that way, but he's getting flushed. Miyazawa's on the pressure, and he forces an overthrow. Yeah, good pressure by Miyazawa coming up from his linebacker spot, rushing. That's Joshua Miyazawa. That name might sound familiar because his brother Jonah recently graduated as a wide receiver for the Raiders. He's at Central Washington. Central Washington might sound familiar because that is also where former uh, Raider quarterback Taijan Mizutani is. We're gonna have a field goal attempt here by Kawamoto. He'll put it down at the 26 yard line, 36 yard attempt, it's up. And it is good. So with 8.57 to go in the first quarter, 36-yard field goal by Kawamoto. Puts the Bulldogs on the board and out in front, 3-0, here in the 56th annual Father Bray Memorial Football Classic. Nice job of Kaimuki getting their points on the board, but good job of Iolani's defense rebounding after those first couple big plays and settling down a little bit. They're gonna have to do that today. Considerable difference um, from last year's Father Ray where the, the Raiders jumped all over Waipahu from the opening whistle. And Waipahu got its revenge in the semifinals of the state tournament over at their field and advanced to the championship game, which they won. Here's Kawamoto again. Let's see if he does the short kick. This is... Somewhat short, but longer, and down the middle. This is Brock Hidani with it. Brock bounces to the outside, finds some running room. And is ushered out of bounds at about the 37 yard line. That was a neat spin by, by Hidani to get out of there. Um, you know, it's good, good, good position to start for the Iolani offense on the second possession. Last possession, they went three and out. Let's see how they fare here on their second opportunity. 
Give is to Hidani. He gets back to the line of scrimmage or thereabouts. Rakidani was a defender for his previous years on the varsity. Yeah, good athlete, just trying to see where he can help the team the most and contribute in the most way. Chong looking to his left. He's complete to Sunada. And he's swung down by Nico Eason. Yeah, hit trout by Sunada, and uh, of note, he's taking the place of Carter Kamana, who is injured. Uh, so good, good way for uh, Sunada to step up there. Those are some big shoes to fill. There's Very Carter good. Kamana. Two receivers either side of Chong. Now he sends one in motion. That's Gaudi. He'll come back this way. Fake to Hadani. Chong rolling. Looking for Manuel. Falls incomplete. Incomplete pass intended for number six, Marlon Manuel. That brings up fourth down. Sunada was open in the middle of the field, crossing over from the weak side. Hopefully we can see him later on that. So another punting opportunity for Wailoa. He gets that one away. Another end over end one that results in another good Raider bounce. This time inside the five. That might be around the three yard line there. What a punt. Yeah, that was a good job by Manuel good getting it down there in the coverage team. If my math is correct, and it usually isn't, but maybe it is here, 53 yards on the punt for Wailoa, good job. Kaimuki so far doing a good job. I think they're playing the game they want, shut them down on defense and make the plays on offense. For Iolani, they're gonna have to c c make all those plays and uh, execute, especially with Kaimuki's low numbers. You can't let them stay in the game. They're gonna team that's gonna come back and haunt you later. I just watched as Mayava, the Kaimaki quarterback, jogged in and passed the Raider defense, and he's bigger than most of our Raider defenders. And he's a sophomore, too. <laughs> Including the linemen. Impressive. Fulaao with it. Good job by the Raider defense running to the ball. Yeah, and that's the thing, Kaimuki, if you look at them here in person, they have a lot of good athletes, good size. It's just that they don't have a lot of them. So again, not that Iolani has the high numbers either, but we have less guys going both ways, if any. So we have to take advantage of that. Mayava comes close to the um, sideline to get the play each time and then jogs in. Yeah, they're not in a hurry to get the play off here. Quick pass that bounced up in the air off of number 48, Taufa. And then another, another Bulldog had a chance on that deflection near the Bulldog sideline. Nevertheless, brings up third and nine for the Bulldogs from their own three. Big down here for the Raiders, see if they can force a punt and get really good field position and jump start their offense. Wyava, three receivers to his right. Pressure coming. Looking down the middle. Good pressure, forces a quick throw and had good coverage. Good play by Iolani's defense. Looks like that pressure was applied by Jaden Morata, number 35. 5'10", 165 pound junior. Let's see if we can get a block here. But Jonah Fa'asoa, who caught a pass earlier, will be the Bulldog punter. Good oh. pressure by Miyazawa, but Fa'asoa gets it away. The Bulldogs benefit from a roll. Lots of good rolls here today in the first quarter. And that will be blown dead 
at the Iolani 44 yard line. So the Raiders have taken the ball at around the 35, the 40 in the same neighborhood. They've gone three and out in their previous two possessions. They are playing without starting left guard Michael, Micah Anduha and starting wide receiver Carter Kamana. This is Brody Bantolina. Takes the ball up the middle for a gain of about three. Iolani trying to establish that run and keep the defense honest, get those passing lanes opened up. Raiders going with a quick tempo here. Chong, that's that one toward Wailoa. Manuel goes out of bounds. The third down, Raiders 0 for 2 on third down so far today. We're just getting started. Thanks for joining us. 5.42 to go here in the first quarter. Across the middle, that's complete to Wailoa. Raiders do have their first first down, and Wailoa breaks a couple tackles. He is into Kaimiki territory and down to the Bulldog 36. Maybe that'll get the offense going there. Nice crossing route. Some good yards after catch there for Wailoa. Bantolina with it. He's got some running room. He's breaking into the second level, into the third level. Still on his feet and into the end zone. Brody Logan Bantolina, 37-yard touchdown run. Raiders out in front, 6 nothing. Wow, what a run. Yeah, nice balance by Bantolina and good efficiency by the offense. Wailoa on to do the place kicking now. Good snap. Kick is up out of the hold. And it is true. And now the Raiders lead it 7-3 to three with 5.13 to go here in the first quarter. You know, Brody Bantolina displayed that good balance there. Brody Bantolina is the Tip, not the typical multi-sport athlete. Brody Bantolina last year participated in five sports here at the school. Football, obviously, judo, wrestling, track and field, soccer. Yes, yeah, some of those happen at the same time. Um, so maybe wrestling, judo, balance, soccer, track and field, all of that. Yeah, that's amazing. Yep. Along with he has to do schoolwork. <laughs> yeah, and because of that, Maybe maybe because of that in the sophomore season. He told me he's going to concentrate on three sports. Four sports. <laughs> Only three. <laughs> yeah. Which sports did he, did he mention the sports? I, I don't. He kind of gave me an in, uh, uh, indication of where uh -huh. he might be leaning. But with so many coaches involved, I don't want to <laughs> go right. on the air. Maybe they can plead their case. He looks like somebody you did like on, his, on your team. Yeah, in any case, they, yeah, they're all fortunate to have him. He's a great kid who works hard. Impressive touchdown run, 37 yards. Got the Raiders on the board. His Manuel's kickoff. It drives Kaluna back. And he brings up the ball, and it bounces out of his hand and out of bounds. As the Raider crowd here gasped. Because that ball was just a few yards away from them in the stands. Yeah, luckily for Kamuki, went out of bounds. Isaac Ignacio with the hit to jar the ball loose there. Yep, Ryan Saruta close to the ball too, trying to get that fumble. Seems like now that the, the tempo of the offense, the 90 degree temperatures here on the field is maybe a little bit getting to Kamuki here. They want to try and control the tempo and rest their guys on offense. Yeah, Ivan, you counted the players in the early... Uh, in the warm-ups, and what did you come yeah, up with? Yeah, they had 29 suited up. Yeah. 
A lot of them are going the boat way, especially on the line. This is Fula Ao. And good gain on first down for him. It's like about five. Kaimaki is across the street, as we mentioned earlier. So they deal with the same kind of climate. And as I understand it, Ka Imuki kind of means hot oven. It's, it's some, I'll double check that with Kusuza and John Yasuda, but there is some indication of Imu is in there because of the heat oh. in this area. You learn something every day, right? <laughs> that seems to match the last few days. Fulao with it. He got stopped in there by Mr. Shaden Molina, number 10. Yeah, we'll be probably calling his name a few times today. He does a good job on that defensive line, setting the edge and applying the rush. Lima Harbottle, the nose guard, also in there on the stop. They are they're kind of people you can see out there, Eric, because they're the, they're the two big ones, <laughs> the two and the rest guys. of the nine guys are kind of oh. like rovers. Right. right. I was just <laughs> going to say, the most challenging thing about Coach Delbert, Delbert uh, Tengan's defense is knowing which position they, are, they play. They're all about the same out there. Mayava flushed. And he runs into Lana Kilape and Miyazawa, and they bring him down. Yeah, no, Just he, got the first down. He, he fought for that. He, 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 I think it was the uh, forward progress yeah. spot there. And again, he must be, he looks like a six-footer. Yeah, I was just going to ask what you would gauge that yeah. as. I mean, so yes. using his height, to just barely get that first down. And he is a sophomore. Fula yeah. yeah. with it. He brought down in the backfield. Nice. Miyazawa was there. Yeah, nice play by Miyazawa. That's the, uh, the penetration you want from your end edge player. Along with KC Bell. I'm a yeah. member of the class of 87, so I have to mention that those two gentlemen are sons of class of 87 parents. Miyazawa and Bell. And you have more, I believe. Yeah. Probably have more, yeah. Yes. Kilo Scanlon. Ignacio. Ignacio, yeah. Mayava harassed in the backfield by Wataru. Zedaya is there and brings him down for a sack. Yeah, he had a nice personnel change by Coach Tengon, bringing rest some guys and bringing some guys for pressure, and they did a good job. Jedidaya Wataru, all 5'7 and 151 pounds of him. Senior, third year on the varsity. Yeah, he provided that speed, edge rush, did his job sometimes known as Jace. 148 and counting here in the first quarter. Raiders leading it seven to three. Third and 15 from their own 30. Mayava looking for somebody. That one was intended for Tanioka. He could not hold on. Yeah, again, good pressure by the Iolani D-line. Um, Kamuki O-line got some beef to them, but the D-line's doing a good job of penetrating and putting on a chase to that quarterback. Jonah Fa'asoa will drop back and punt once again. Back for the Raiders are Pei. And Cole Ichikawa. This is Cole Ichikawa. And the penalty flag flies in. As Cole turns the corner on the far side. He's chopped down by Lana Kalu Kaluna. But we'll see about the penalty. As we wait for the call, we should mention it's been a well-played game. Not a lot of penalties. 
Yeah, both teams seem very well disciplined, uh, well coached teams. Head coach David Tautofi of the Kaimiki Bulldogs bringing his team across Date Street. I wonder what the mode of transportation was. Do we know? Did they, they walk? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Maybe just that was their pregame warm up. Hey, you got 29 yeah. players. Maybe they just needed a, a crossing guard. Here's Jonah Chong. Quick connection over the middle to Noah Gowdy, and he is into Bulldog territory on that beautifully painted eye shield with 1.07 to go here in the first quarter. Kawamoto in on the stop for the Yeah, good Bulldogs. job of hitting Gowdy up the seam there. It's to give to Brock Hidani, and he slowed down in the backfield and met by a bunch. Of uh, Bulldogs. And that's why you have to run that, that running play that we just saw. Whether you gain a lot of yards or not, it keeps that seam pass open. So the linebackers have to respect that run. Fa'asoa and Navarez were in on the stop there. 33 seconds to go here. Quarter number one. Chong's pass. Little high intended for Ryan Sunada. It'll bring up third and 12 at midfield. 23 seconds to go here. Chong just a little high on his passes on his misses today. If he can make that adjustment, he'll be right there. Michael Noda into the game in the slot for the Raiders. That passes over the middle once again to Noah Gowdy, and he has enough for the first down and gets it out to the 35-yard line. Yeah, that was uh, a, a result of great protection, so he could wait and let it fell up, and Gowdy eventually got open, and he made a nice throw. Yeah, Chong must have heard me on that one. He hit him in the chest on that one and heard yeah. it from here. <laughs> yeah, but a great job by the O-line there. And like, co like Coach Wendell looks says, that's probably the most... Um, underappreciated uh, unit on the team, that O-line, right? The work that they put in and the job that they have to do. Yes. They put DJ Tano there working. So that's the end of the first quarter. The Ohlone Raiders lead at 7-3 to three over their neighbors, the Kaimaki Bulldogs. This is the 56th annual Father Bay Memorial Football Classic. Thank you for joining us for wherever you are in the world. This is John Tamanaha alongside Ivan Suzuki and Mr. Eric Perkins. And Leo, Braulio Aguilar, is here as our spotter. And Braulio hasn't even gone to school yet at the school. School starts on Monday. He is a new student, residence hall student. Thank you for joining us. He is from Mexico City. As I mentioned, this is the Father Bray game. Um, and we should mention a bit about Father Bray and let you know who he is. The one team that you see on the middle of the field that, of course, began with Father Bray, the man we honor today. He was born in 1895 in Lancashire, England. He later came to the United States and earned his divinity degree in New York City. He went on to teach in Wisconsin, Connecticut, and Pennsylvania. In 1917, in the middle of that teaching career, he enlisted in the United States military and served in World War I. In 1932, he finally settled in Hawaii at Iolani School. This is Brock Hidani on first and 10 at the 35. He might have got back to the line of scrimmage. Then when... Yeah, that was well diagnosed by the Kamuki defense. They didn't go for all of those fakes that uh, Iolani did. Second and 10. Chong, that pass complete to Ichikawa, but that will not gain too many yards before he's brought down with a heavy hit. 
the number, two, number eight, Moanu Anu, Colby Moanu Anu. We have a penalty flag. That tackle was up in the helmet region. It's called for a personal foul. Now, anytime you lead with the helmet or hit the helmet, you're going to get a penalty now. And that's all for the safety of the players. Take the give and Chong pass complete to Lailoa Manuel. Kamiki Bench saw a fumble. Just to go on about Father Bray, when he came to Iolani and Hawaii, that was when Iolani was a small boys' school in Nuuanu. And his impact at Iolani School was immense, and it continues to this day despite the fact that he passed away 66 years ago. And again, we'll see, hear from three of the Father Bray honorees. Uh, we'll see them at halftime. High pass, but it's brought down by Wailoa. Good catch by him, and he gets it out to near the 10-yard line. Yeah, Wailoa is a great athlete, showing his jumping ability there. Great hands. Again, ball a little high. Third and four. The market at the 11. Chong cross, cross the middle to Noah Gowdy, and Noah Gowdy's in for the score. Yeah, nice execution on that drive. Good job. Yeah, picture perfect pass on that slant route. You had you had the best view of it from yes, our angle. It was a great angle. They spread they spread out the defense with empty. Executed it nicely. Wailoa on for the extra point. And that is good. Out of the hold of Rexton Suzuki. And now the Raiders are up. 14 to 3 with 10.24 to go in the second quarter. Yeah, and I think that's the key for them in this game is to execute like that. That's what they're capable of on this offense. And, you know, credit to Kaimuki. They're playing hard out there. But as long as Ilani executes like that, it's, it's going to be tough for a team like Kaimuki to keep up with that. Noah Gaudi is stepping up here this afternoon. He came into the game with three catches for 17 yards and no touchdowns. He has surpassed that already. Last year, he had six catches for 36 yards and one touchdown as a sophomore. Five foot nine, 150 pound junior. Yeah, and again, with Carter Kamana out, not only is replacement, which is Sonata need to pick it up, but the whole offense as a whole. So again, a guy like Noah Gaudi stepping up is, is great for this offense. Ball falls off the tee, which is the least exciting play in football, <laughs> I would think. So now it will be need to, needed to be kicked out of the hold of Trevor Kahn. Nice kick by Wailoa Manuel. Forces the Bulldog returner Kaluna into the end zone for the touchback. Uh, let's see what Kamuki's offense can do now. Uh, you know, just got to maybe establish, establish their offense a little bit, move the chains, get a few first downs if they can't score. But they need to probably keep their defense and give them some rest, give, keep them off the field a little while here. Jaden Maiava, the Kamuki Bulldog quarterback, he has already received attention from SEC schools. Has some time, 
Finds a man over the middle. He is swung down by Sterling Sakashita. That is Kurt Kawamoto, the Bulldog receiver. Or, excuse me. Or Williams. Matt Williams, excuse me. 34. Yeah, and Mayawa, you mentioned, I mean, he does have, I mean, he's only a sophomore, and his skill set that he has with his size, his athleticism, uh, so far he's shown an accurate arm uh, and, you know, ability to move around in the pocket. So, you know, he does have a skill set for those big five power conference teams. And this time he connects with Williams again. And Matt Williams gets out near the 43-yard line. Yeah, good job finding the soft spot in the defense, kind of in front of the safety and behind the linebackers in the middle there. He'll mark it at the 44. Play action in completion over the middle. Looking for Williams again. As another RPO, run pass option. Although it took a little while to develop. Because if he caught the ball, they had linemen passed him already down the field. <laughs> Not sure if uh, referees would have thrown a flag there for illegal man downfield. So the RPOs, that thing needs to be completed either behind the line of scrimmage or... In quick enough before the lineman can get down the field in order for it to be a successful play. They have about two yards. Right? Yeah. Two yard right bubble, up, two up. yard cushion at the line of scrimmage. I have a pass complete to number eight, Moa Anu Anu. And he's taken him out of bounds by Isaac Ignacio. There's something yellow on the field there. Is that a penalty flag? Or is it something from the Kaneki bench? No penalty on the play. First and 10 for the Bulldogs at the Raider 44. 9.01 to go until halftime. Stick with us during halftime. You'll be treated to the 2019-20 debut of the Ilani School Marching Band and Ilani Dance Team. Looks like we'll get a false start here on the Bulldogs. You know, at halftime, guys, we're going to be swarmed by people. You, this is not your first rodeo, but wow, when the halftime show starts, everybody descends on our uh, midfield location to get their, their recordings in. Yeah. <laughs> starting to get a little crowded already. You're lucky. We have three cameras out here, and we will bring it to you live. Fulaau with it. He drags a Raider tackler with him for about a gain of seven. Ilani rotating some guys back in. Looks like Pei and Miyazawa are getting a breather, and they're back in now. We are joined at our location by Dr. and Mrs. Cottrell. This is the, uh, I guess this is kind of like the hottest luxury suite box you'll find in football. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> He's tickling me. Oh, That's so a lateral pass, but it is complete to Fulaau. So that is a rush. Yeah, nicely read by Kamat coming up from his safety position. As soon as that ball is thrown, flying up to make the tackle. And Kamat's another guy that the defense is going to need a lot of plays from too this year. He's, he's been in the program for a while, and he knows what he's doing out there, and he's got the size and speed to make those plays. Longtime Iolani Raider or Red Raider fans will recognize that name. His uncle was Randy Kamat, quarterback of the Iolani Red Raiders, class of... 1978. His dad, Michael, class of 77. 
Also played sports here at Yolani School. Mayaba looking deep, but that's over the head of Mo Anu Anu. Fourth down for the Bulldogs. They will punt it away. Well, Kamuki, you know, they got a couple first downs there. Uh, trying to change the field position here and keep the hot offense off the field. High snap, but fielded by Fa'a Soa, but he can't get the punt off because of pressure by Miyazawa and company, and he runs it out of bounds. Turnover on downs. And the Raiders will have it in great field position with 7.22 to go here until halftime. Yeah, good job by Faso to field that snap and get something. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, he has been the quarterback of the Kaimiki Bulldogs, so fielding those high snaps in the shotgun position is not foreign to him. It's complete to Tsunada. He's tackled immediately out there by Pfeiffer Kekoa. A good job by Iolani's offense, just taking what they give. They're giving up that five-yard hitch, and Iolani just taking what they, what they give them, five yards. Yep. Chong, two receivers to each side. Gaudi across the middle, they'll give it to Bantolina up the middle. He gains a couple. Chung so far remaining in the game. Last week we saw a little rotation with the quarterbacks by quarter. Right now Chong staying in, taking the snaps. Third and three from the Kaimaki 46. Big down here for the Raiders. 6.26 to go. Chong flushed. He might be able to run for it, but he brought down short. That'll bring up fourth down. An interesting decision here for... Maybe they might try and draw him off sides if they have something in that nature in their offense right now. Coach Wendell looks, sends in the punting unit. Playing it safe. Yeah, going for the field position here. Get the ball back later with time Kam left in the half. Kamaki scrambling. They couldn't get their guys on. Good job of Iolani getting on quick with a quick punt. That ball will roll dead. It's tough to see from our angle. Maybe around the 15 yard line. So we have 5.44 to go. Both teams with three timeouts remaining. Mentioned some of the Raider defenders out there. Micah Shikada at corner, along with the other corner, our near side, Trevor Khan. Kamat at free safety. Isaac Ignacio here in the Raider or nickel position. This is Fua Laau. Kamat puts his shoulder into him. This is what you like to see, all 11 guys, one big pile right there. Big up 10 yards on the first down on the handoff to number one, Dalmas Oswego, Pula the Hall. Well, the Kamaki, I can see that they're Kamaki players. Some of them are really tired, asking for substitutions here. It's tough. Especially the two-way players. If they can get a couple first downs and stop Iolani from scoring before the half, they've done a good job and keep keep themselves in the game at 14 to three right now. Looks like they have to sub a uh, player out here. Equipment issue usually. Referee rolls the clock. We are now under five minutes in the second quarter. 
Fakula Al with it. He gains a good chunk of yards as he is, as we have seen him do throughout the afternoon. If they can control the clock with, with their run game here, that'll be ben very beneficial for their offense. Running back in though. This is Mayava. He's harassed in the backfield, Ooh. gets his pass away, however. It's oh. enough for a first down to Matthew Williams. See, and that's an example of Mayava. I mean, with his, not only with his skill set, but his, his smarts there, keeping his eyes upfield, even under pressure, and delivering a good pass. Yeah, risky play, but he showed good poise. Oh, Alva, another completion oh. over the middle, but the ball is loose. And jumped on immediately. Great play by Kaulana Koluna Jr., who is on the spot. After Nico Eason lost control of that one. We mentioned Dr. and Mrs. Cottrell joining us here at our broadcast location. Other Cottrell family members are watching. Kay is in Stone Harbor, New Jersey. Kay is the grandmother of Sean Cottrell, who will be playing the saxophone in the marching band at halftime. Also in New Jersey is Christine, auntie of Sean Cottrell. Thank you for tuning in to the 56th annual Father Bay Memorial Football Classic. We've got flags. Delay will be called on Kaimuki. It's a big penalty. They had second and short. And now it's going to be second and long. Penalty moves the ball back to the 42-yard line. Looks like they're running the same play. Screen. Oh, set up. That's to Fuala'au. And he's still on his feet. Well into rated territory, almost to the 30 yard line. Yeah, nice screen play. They got the defense flowing one way, threw it back to the running back who leaked out, and sometimes just got one guy out there to beat. A lot of space to run. Sterling Sakashita on the stop for the Raiders. Sterling playing one of those rover positions by Coach Delbert. He's uh, like a safety, but he'll come up in the box and he looks like a middle linebacker. Kind of set back a little. Good job by the Bulldog coaches here and managing this end of the half drive. Now it's 2.22 to go, clock running. So they hand off to number 10, 22, Blade Pfeiffer Kikoa. Good job by Molina penetrating in there to make the play. Both teams with three timeouts remaining, so uh, see if we can use their timeouts wisely. Alva, good time. Pass is incomplete. Intended for Williams. Incomplete pass intended for number 34, Matt Williams. We've got a stoppage of play to tend to a Raider defender. Iolani still with all its timeouts. Concern now for the injured player. That is number 25, Jace Arakaki. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, hopefully they're not work looking at his knee, which they might be. Um, he's had a knee issue before, and he's worked hard to get it healthy again and contribute to this team. He's another hard worker on the team, undersized, but does his job. I want to point out that Bulldog head coach David Tautofi was make his way over to our the Raider fallen injured player who did get up, but good good uh, deal of sportsmanship there by Coach Tautofi showing his concern. Andrew Luck informs the Colts he's retiring. Ivan Suzuki is showing me ESPN.com. Wow. Maybe you'll remember this day as the day Andrew Luck retired. <laughs> That's very That's shocking. surprising. Third and 11. Oh. Another completion over the middle to Williams. That has been Mayava's favorite target. And he's hit out of bounds to stop the clock. So the Bulldogs don't need to use their timeout. Yeah, smart play. Good play calling, good execution across the middle there. They're getting out of bounds. A lot of times guys will forget that and fight for that extra yardage. Ivan Suzuki, as the head coach of the Iolani Intermediate Football Team, you've got to be impressed by this, this drive oh, management. Yeah, very, very impressed. Good play calling. And again, the quarterback, he, he's something special here as a sophomore. Pass over the middle, jump pass, kind of, to Matthew Williams. The aforementioned favorite target. Similar to the first play of the game, they didn't call it again till now, they saved it. Yeah, another RPO. Sucked the Ilani defense in, especially up the middle, and he was wide open in the back. Jaden Mayava. Touchdown pass to Matthew Williams. And Kawamoto on for the extra point. Good job by Kamuki, credit to them. Not only did they, they haven't allowed Iolani to score before the half ends, they still got a minute 25, but they put their own seven on the board. Yeah, that was a really good play. Is, yeah. that, is that kind of a jump pass, but he didn't need to jump? Yeah, kind of, yeah. And, I, and like I said, I think it was either the same or similar to that first play of the yeah. game. And good job by the coaches to not overuse it. I think Iolani kind of forgot about that play, and then they pulled it out of their back pocket again. So is a first play kind of a, a one of your favorite plays when you go into a game, Isaac? You've kind of got things charted. Yeah, and, and, uh, I well, I think, you know, teams do their scouting. They do their preparation, and they figure out which plays they think is going to be successful, and they figure out which play that, you know, they, they want to start the game with. Yeah, that's a and I think, call. yeah. You go back to it. Hey, that's one of, one of the things you think is going to work. Yeah, he was successful on the first one. Came back to that, and it, it paid off. Yeah, saved it for the right time. As a short kick by Kawamoto. This is fielded by Lana Kilape. Dangerous return, man. He sets the Raiders up with good field position with 119 to go until halftime. We should mention that Coach Tautofi is joined in the coaching staff by two of his brothers, Daniel and Darrell. It's always good to have people on your staff that you trust. And let's see, there's a lot of time, a minute and 19, a lot of time for Iolani's offense. See if they can get points on the board before the half and answer Kamuki's drive. Chong, pass complete to Sunada. And he is out of bounds. Now it's the clock. Good quick pass, getting small chunks. They got time to drive it down, but a couple chunk plays, 10 or more yards would be good for the Iolani offense. Raider head coach Wendell Look has three timeouts in his back pocket. 113 to go here. Second and five. This is Brock Kidani. He gets the ball into Bulldog territory, about to the 48. Timeout kind of key is the signal. Mm-hmm. Right, Kamuki's thinking if they can hold him here and the punt, maybe they can go and with a little less than a minute left, see if they can make a drive. Yeah, they get the ball back. You know, and they're banking on maybe Iolani throwing it, and if it's an incomplete pass, they don't even have to use a timeout. It'll be third and three when we resume after the timeout. 
And the Bulldogs have another timeout. So yeah, if the Raiders don't make it, if it's an incomplete pass, clock will stop. If it's a run or some sort of short completion, they could call a timeout. timeout. Yeah, and Ilani can run any play here. Third and yeah. short, you can run any play because you still can call a timeout after. So it could be run or pass. Hard play to defend on third and short, second and short. Pretty much the offense has any play they want. Tough to call on the defense. You're going to bring pressure or sit back and play your, your base defense. Let's see if Iolani goes back to that hit for five yards, if Karmaki gives them that. They come in out in an empty, so it's not a run. Drag in the middle. Good time for Chong. He finds Sunada. He's driven back, but he, forward progress gets him the first down at the Bulldog. 44 yard line. The clock stops as they move the chains. Nope. Is it going? It's still going. That was. Uh, now the referee comes in, stands over the ball. Clock still to get running. It set. 44, 43. Wow, a lot of time went off the clock there. I believe at the end of that play, it had about 50, 50 yeah. seconds left, and yeah. it's now at 37. I don't know if they thought the clock was stopping because of the first down. So Coach Wendell Look is trying to get the attention of officials. And he's, he's hugging Matt Williams over there, time to keep Bulldog player who came over to say hi. And now the referee and a couple more officials are talking it over. Isn't it that you have to set, stop the clock to set, set the chains? chains? Yeah. Or, or the referee sets the ball, and then we'll, we'll run it once mm -hmm. he sets the ball, right? Yeah. And then the chain crew has to catch up. So I, saw, it, I yeah. saw the chain crew kind of in the process of setting up. Then the referee, the white hat, ran in and stood over the ball for a little bit. But right. that's when we both looked over to the clock, Ivan, and it was still yes. going. So now, this doesn't. Now the chain gang is moving, moving the other direction. And now they're marking it as a fourth down. Oh. He didn't. I thought he was clearly over the line and got pushed back. I thought he was clearly over the line too. I was going to give him credit for running a great route, making sure that when he catches the ball, he already had the first down. And they'll wind the clock. It started at 37. Now it's 32, 31. The play clock is at 18. Punt Good away punt. by Wailoa. Bounces into oh. the end zone for a touchback. Yeah, and if they were going to punt it, maybe they could have let the time run a little bit more. I'm not sure what the play I clock was down yeah, to. Yeah, it was down to 18. To 18. Now that gives them about 22 seconds, but Kamuki maybe just be content to just run the clock out here, go in down four. Yeah, good thing actually Ilani didn't call a timeout because yeah. they would have stopped the clock and we would have said, never mind, we don't want the timeout, but it worked out that way. I'm wondering yeah. if it was that close, do you call uh, an official's timeout to measure? That was right. very yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll talk about that on Monday, guys. <laughs> <laughs> 22 seconds to go, Raiders leading it 14 to 10. 20 seconds to go in the first half, I should say. Looks like they'll take a knee. Mayava is under center for the first time today and does indeed take a knee. And there will be no timeout by the Raiders, and the clock will run down. And we will go to halftime. Thank you for joining us for the 56th annual Father Bray Memorial Football Classic. The Raiders lead it 14 to 10. Stay with us. Repeat, stay with us for the halftime show, which features the 2019 debut of the Iolani marching band and the Iolani dance team. This show is the tribute to the greatest showman. Very popular. Field props were designed by band alumna and parents and built in combination with a whole bunch of people, including current students. You see some 
artwork out there, and we've got JV cheerleaders out there to hold it up, all sorts of things. Very impressive. As the band is getting set, I'd like to share um, an Iolani minute. Well, we know what that is, but there's these, there was a lot of sharing this week about little minute stories about that shows you how much of a, a wonderful place Iolani School is. The band was supposed to be off on Thursday, but they called their own rehearsal. They were off because Mr. Dayao was in his you know back to school meetings all day as we were. So they called their own rehearsal, and Irena Yamatsu, the drum major, assigned them all homework to watch footage from the week's earlier rehearsals. And Mr. Dayao received a surprise Google document of rehearsal reflections that evening. Wow. Unbelievable. So even when they don't get homework, they assign themselves homework. <laughs> Students goodness. are assigning That's homework. Right. <laughs> and there's practices and rehearsals when the coach and the band director has to be in meetings. So. No, good for them. Great initiative. Great initiative. And that's the pride they take in what they do. It's awesome to see. And you can see it on, this, on display here as you see the intricacies of the setup. Looks like they're fighting the wind on one of those. Of course, the dance team is out there, and we'll see a couple dance soloists, Tori Abe and Brandy Nakamura, both seniors, class of 2020. And the band members will be showing you their choreography as well. And then toward the end of the show, we will see the three Father Bray honorees that you met earlier through the video piece that we played. They're receiving that high honor. And we'll turn it over to drum major Irena Yamatsu of the class of 2020.
job by the band and dance team and now we're getting set to honor our three Father Bray honorees. Mr. Walter Luke, class of 53, Sari Uechi, class of 86, who will be represented by her children. And Mr. Willie Keola Jr., class of 73. Dr. Cottrell has made his way down to the field from our luxury position here, our broadcast location. I recognize those soldiers anywhere. Today, we would like to introduce and honor several special guests, each of whom represent the qualities that Father Bray regarded so highly. Unselfishness, humility, and a genuine concern for teammates and peers. These alumni embody the one team spirit and legacy that Father Bray left for Eli School. Please help us welcome this year's honorees. Walter Luke, class of 1953. 
That was great to see those honorees come out. And as we were mentioning earlier, this week has been filled with a lot of one team moments. Um, yesterday was a surprise one during a faculty work. Usually there's a kickoff meeting and the board of governor chair comes out and says a few words. This time something else developed. Um, and we're gonna show you a video uh, Doc Mugishi started to tell a story about one of his former players, Bobby Webster, class of 02, who is the general manager of the Toronto Raptors. And Doc didn't finish that story. He let the man himself, Bobby Webster, finish it. And he came out from the back of the student center and he was holding the Larry O'Brien NBA World Championship trophy. Take a look at this video. this kid from Kailua, Iolani graduate, was the youngest general manager ever to lead a team to the World Championship in the NBA Finals. And so that was what happens when you pursue excellence, is you can rise to the pinnacle at that young age. So when you think about those two things, the pursuit of excellence and creating this place, it plays out in real life. I wouldn't be standing in front of you if this place didn't have an incredibly strong impact on me. One thing I do think is what Doc said is, I came here in the ninth grade, and I remember my experience coming here for the visit, that it felt like people cared. And so when Doc asked me to come speak, I wouldn't be standing up here if, I, if this place didn't mean a lot to me. And I think just remember that as you, know, you go on this, this next school year. Was that fun for you guys yesterday? Seeing yeah. Bobby Webster come back. And you know what was fun for me? Was seeing the reaction of the faculty and staff. I mean, it was like. <laughs> it was like we were a part of the championship, <laughs> yeah. right? We, we celebrated it. It was, it was neat. It was fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it was fun for everybody. What a great story, too. And Doc really set it up nicely. <laughs> yeah. Doc was given, a, I mean, he gave a great speech, and then just to cap it off in that fashion and have Bobby bring it home was, was unbelievable. Yeah, it's proud, proud, you know, 
for everybody, not only Bobby, but the Iolani community, the faculty. I mean, it was great that he mentioned some of his teachers that he had. Um, you know, always appreciating his high school experience. Yeah. One thing I was wondering was um, these orientation uh, sessions and meetings are, are, are good for people to meet each other with its faculty and students and all that. And it, it, the new people, though, the things that were happening on campus this week uh, were amazing. And for the new people, it just must be, um, it must be rather mind-blowing, very impressive to the community that they've joined. Yeah, yeah, I think it's great to, for them to feel and see what they're a part of. And, and you're not going to learn the culture and, and get it down in one day, but, but that was a, a big start for that to, to set that and show what, you know, what they're a part of. I always say it's like joining the New York Yankees, even though I'm a Red Sox fan. Like when you become a Yankee, you know that mystique and that culture, and you're proud to be a Yankee, and you, and you want to be a part of that. So I hope that's what we try to do here as well. And a uh, big shout-out to uh, Kirk Oejo and Jamie Shomalu who made that happen with their crew. They, they hit it out of the park yesterday, on Thursday. Absolutely. Great job by them and many other people who came together to put that on. You're also seeing it out here on the field. We just saw the marching band and the dance team and, and the football team. Um, and I, I love to ask the football players and other athletes, um, what does one team mean to you? And that's, that's not an easy question. Um, Here's what Micah Kamat said. He says, it's what you see on that football field. I think the football team displays one team the best. He might be a little biased, but I, I, I would agree <laughs> to some degree. The strong traditions, the trust one has in our coaches, our teachers, our mentors, our teammates. When you look at us, we don't look competitive at the D1 level. Well, I might disagree with that. They look pretty, but I know what he's saying. Um, he goes on to say, but we work hard use each other's strengths to improve. The only way to be one team is for everyone to buy in. Yeah, that's hit it right on the spot. And I think what he means by when you look at us, not the way that they play, but just in stature, I guess. I think that's what he means by when you look at us, but um, you know, the way, the way they prepare, the way they play, uh, they look like a D1 team. The highlight of the first half was probably Brody Bantolina's 37-yard touchdown run where he kind of stepped over some people, regained his balance, and went on in, into the end zone with a really impressive run. And this is what Brody has to say because, I mean, he did a great job on there, but I'm, his teammates had to do a part there. But this is what he says. One team to me is a group, a team, or a school working together towards a common goal. It's not you or I, it's us. It's a team. There is no I or me in team. Yeah, well said by both of those guys. It's about buying in and being part of something bigger than you and, and what you can do for that and, and enjoying the success of the team and knowing that you had a part in it. Oh, here we go for the second half. Great game unfolding here. Thank you for joining us. Wailoa Manuel to get the second half started. Raiders leading it 14 to 10. Coluno on the return. He's met by Murata, but he's a tough man to bring down. You mentioned Bantolina's run earlier. The key for that was the big play before that that allowed the offense to go up tempo and run that play and catch uh, Kaimuki off guard as Bantolina shot up the middle. If we can do more of that this quarter, that would be important and key. So the Bulldogs will have it first here in the third quarter. Bulldog quarterback Jaden Maiava, 8 of 15 in the first half for 137 yards. Five of his completions went to Matt Williams for 64 yards. There's a completion over the middle to Fa'asoa. And Jonah Fa'asoa had a completion in the first half for 43 yards. This is another big gainer, first, first down. Yeah. Anybody recognize that play? It's the same yeah. play. Same play as first the first play. play of the game in a touchdown. They brought out it again, first play of the second half. On the flip side, Kaimuki, Kaimuki did a good job controlling the ball on the clock and only allowing 14 points by Iolani in the first half. Ball at midfield. 
Third quarter just underway. This is Ualaau. He had 41 yards on 11 carries in the first half. For the most part, I think Iolani's defense has done a pretty stout job against, against the run. It, um, it's just the ability of the quarterback and the receivers making some big plays that have uh, helped Kamaki and have, have them move down the field. But overall, being outsized on the line, they did, they're doing a good job. Ayala's pass almost intercepted by Casey Bell, I good. believe, number 26. And yeah, I think you're about to say a good pressure by <laughs> Jaden Morata in the backfield. Yeah, and we've seen that all day by the um, front of Iolani. Um, every time he's dropped back to pass at least a four or five step drop, we've, the Iolani defense have gotten in there. So good job and allows for those uh, interceptions in the backfield. Jaden came from the right side from Mayava's left. Now he flip flops with Shaden Molina. They flip end spots. Lima Harbottle still in the middle at nose guard. Another quick pass over the middle. This time can't make a connection. Yeah, and that time, well, the first time their defense was successful against that play. Yep. Went to the well one more time on that one. Didn't work this time, though. It'll bring up fourth down for the Bulldogs. Faso punted away. Lanakila Pei is the lone Raider back to return. Anakila fields it on a hop, headed to that far side, almost turned the corner. Good tackle out there by Fulaao, among others. Yeah, that's something to uh, keep an eye on uh, on, the, on the Kamaki bench. Uh, Mayava's being worked on. He was a little shaken up on that, mm. on that play when he got hit by Morata. Raiders with it for the first time here in the second half. 10-24 to go, third quarter. Bantolina with it. He squirts through the middle for a good yardage. Gets a first down. Brody Bantolina, he had four carries for 40 yards. Most of that came on that 37-yard touchdown run. And they're going up temple. Empty backfield, five receivers. It's Chong. It's complete to Suzuki. Rexton Suzuki. He gets it out to midfield. Jonah Chong was 11 of 16 in the first half for 89 yards. Completion to number eight, Rexton Suzuki is good for a four-yard pickoff. Jonah, a six foot, 165 pounds senior. This time he gives it to Bantolina again, but this time he's met by a bunch of Bulldogs thrown for a loss. Yeah, Kaimuki able to stuff that one and create a third and long situation now, make it a little more challenging for the Ilani offense. Something more than a short pass is going to have to get the first down. Three receivers to Chong's left, two to his right. Jonah with time, over the middle. That's Wailoa Manuel. Gets some extra running room. Yeah, and Iolani has had success with that drag pattern over the middle. Good job by Jonah and Wailoa. They connect. Get the ball out to the 36 yard line of Pine McKee. Yards on the first down on the completion to number six, Wailoa Manuel. Chong, ooh. Oh, that ball was intended for Suzuki. Penalty flag flies. Kind of con collided with Blade Pfeiffer Kikoa. New Orleans Saints fans are wondering why the NFL referees couldn't call the PI <laughs> on their play, but the high school referees got it right on this one. Yeah, and I'm not sure if it's more of a PI or more of a defenseless. Hit to the helmet. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, but still pass interference. They'll march off 15 yards in the diamond head direction. That'll give the Raiders a first and 10 at the Bulldog 21. 8.41 left in the third quarter. It's Gaudi in motion. Give us to Bantolina up the middle. Trying to create some misdirection. Good jump cut there by Brody to get some extra yardage. Sometimes Chong will toss that ball ahead to the man in motion, Gaudi. Second and six from the 17. Pass complete to Wailoa Manuel. He stays on his feet along that far sideline. That'll result in a first down Raiders. Wailoa, nice catch, deciding to cut back to the outside, knowing that the corner is the only guy there and trying to get around him for some extra yardage. 10 yards on the first down on the completion to number six, Wailoa Manuel. Wailoa had three catches for 22 yards in the first half. Kai McKee hustles to get their players off. Huh. Bantolina again, good gain up the middle. Yeah, they're slowly wearing the Kamaki defense down. And I, you know, I mentioned that they're going tempo, but I think that is their offense is, is going up tempo. So they're not really in going any faster. When you see the big guys with the hands on the hips, you know they're getting tired. Second and goal from the three. Bantolina met in the backfield, but he gets away running left, and he's into the end zone for his second score of the afternoon. Brody Bantolina from three yards out. Yeah, what a great run. Uh, actually, Kamaki was ready for that. They knew they were going up the middle. They sent the two backers up the middle, stuffed it, and he just bounced it outside and used his speed. He has... Great speed to get around the corner. Yeah, and good job by our receiver, Ilani's receiver on the edge there, sustaining his block, allowing Bantolina to get in the end zone and the other uh, offensive lineman on that side. Wailoa on for the extra point. Out of Rexton Suzuki's hold. And that is good. So the Raiders extend their lead to 21 to 10, 7.06 left here in the third quarter of the Father Bray Memorial Football Classic. Yeah, that was a big score by Iolani, because again, if you keep it close for Kaimuki, they're a talented team with good athletic players, and you give them, keep it within one or two scores, they're gonna surprise you and jump on you. You gotta keep that distance. As fans can see, this is an exciting Raider team to watch. I invite you all to come out and watch this team play football. They actually will take a break next week, but they'll be back in action on Friday, September 6th at Kailua. That game kicks off at 7.30 p.m. Then they'll have two games at Aloha Stadium back-to-back -back versus Waipahu on September 13th and Damien on September 20. Those are both Fridays, again, both at the stadium. Then it's homecoming back here at Eddie Hamada Field on Friday, September 27th versus Radford. That game will kick off after school at 3.15. Then it'll be a game at, against Lelehua back at Aloha Stadium on October 5th. The regular season will close out on October 11th with a game at Castle. If the Raiders qualify for the HHSAA State Tournament Division 1, that will begin more than a month later after that last game on November 15th. Come out and join us at Raider Football. It's a fun team to watch. Really competitive games. Wailoa, this has happened a lot so far this season. A lot of touchbacks. Very strong leg from Wailoa Manuel. I know, it's, uh, we're, we're kind of hot up here, but I don't know if how windy it is up there. That's the third time the wind blew the <laughs> ball off the tee. I saw him <laughs> do that in those games that... Um, Moana Lua and Aiea. Or maybe he's not putting it on the, <laughs> on the tee. 
Maybe it's some sort of directional yeah. strategic oh, yeah. thing, coach. <laughs> <laughs> we shall ask. Bulldogs with it. Same cast of characters out there. Led by Jaden Mayava. Transfer quarterback came back to Kaimaki from a time in Las Vegas. He gives it to Fuala'a. Yeah, and they're not out of it yet. There's a lot of time left. Uh, they don't have to panic, and especially when you have a quarterback like Mayava, you, you know, it's one big play, get you right back into it. Yeah, they're sticking with their game plan. Control the clock, run the ball, open it up with a couple passes here and there. Nothing deep yet, opening up to the wide receivers. See my Alba's arm. Here's something maybe. Pressure in the backfield by a bunch of Raiders. Shaden Molina was there early. And Lana Kila Pei, Jaden Murata. Yeah, and that's one reason why every time he has dropped back for those intermediate longer passes, the D-line has gotten a good job getting pressure. Murata's having a good day out there. Also seven yards on the quarterback sack by number 35, Jaden Murata. Thank you for joining us for this Iolani Live presentation. We're beginning our fifth season of coverage of Raider athletic events, and this is our fourth webcast of the Father Bray Memorial Football Classic. We've done all of them, gentlemen, since it moved yeah. from the stadium here to Eddie Hamada Field. More pressure by the Raiders and another sack. This time, we'll give credit to Shaden Molina. Yeah, coming from the other side, good one-two punch. You don't know who to focus on. Shaden Molina, 6'2", 245 junior. He's a growing boy. Last year, he was listed at 6'2", 224. He's one of our few 200 pounders that yeah. we have. Yeah, he's grown into his body in his younger days. He could play quarterback, wide receiver, defensive end. High snap. Asoa gets it away. This is Cole Ichikawa. He's a da dangerous return man. He's wrapped up and brought down. Yeah, I believe he already has taken one back this year yep. against Ail. Going back to Shade, and he actually played varsity football as a freshman when he got called up for that state semifinal on, on Maui. And he's also played varsity basketball for the last two seasons. Yeah, that intermediate football career was prolific. He didn't know where he was going to be at any moment. Brody Bantolina. Into the game at quarterback now for the Iolani Raiders is junior Samuel Faumuina. We've got some whistles. Sam has got some good amount of playing time this year. He's 11 for 20 for 178 yards and a couple of touchdowns. No interceptions at IA last week. He was eight of 13 for 123 and a score. Famuina flushed out of the pocket, turns his shoulders and launches it deep. He has a man, and that is Cole Ichikawa for a 41 yard touchdown pass, but hold everything, we've got a penalty flag. Thrown by the umpire position. Could be Lyman downfield on a scramble like that. Good job by Falmina though, getting outside and, and sticking with the receivers and Ichikawa getting behind the safeties. Good call, Eric. That was kind of that scramble play. Sometimes we lose track of where we are. But regardless, um, Famuino showed a really strong arm on that one. And he's very capable of running this offense as well. Yeah, he's a senior who's fighting for his time, get his spot at QB too. Um, he's, he's got the height, he's got a strong arm. He's been in the program for a while too, so good to see him getting his opportunities and make the most of it. I think he's a junior, correct? Oh yeah. So, yeah, junior. 
He's got another year. I've this. seen him for so long. I yeah. lose track. I can't yeah. believe Molina's still a junior, too. <laughs> Six foot, 160 pound junior. Grew a couple inches since last year. Back pedals, draws the rush to him, delivers the pass to Brock Hidani. And Brock's off to the races, cuts inside, heading toward the corner, cuts again. And that's a touchdown, this time 46 yards. Balmuina to Hidani. Touchdown, Iolani. All right, Sam Balmuina's touchdown is a few yards longer than his first one. Yeah. <laughs> and Brock, Brock Hidani got to show what he can do. We've got a new place kicker into the game, Mason Mizuta. Five foot 11 sophomore. He gets collided with the kick sails wide. No call by the officials and that is no good. But what a great call on offense. I mean, you know that they were gonna come after him and it uh, was executed very well. The blocks downfield by the linemen, the receivers of their blocks and you know, Brock in the open field with his speed. Yeah, he made something happen there. Yeah, I don't think Ilani's called that play yet today. They saved that mm. one too. That little outlet to the running back. Nice cuts and good burst by Hidani. I think he runs faster with the ball. He's played a lot of defense in his career, but he looks, looks good at running back there in the open field. Yeah, Brock Hidani has taken over the position. Uh, taken over and the number of Kuwanishi Gaia, who is the running back for the Raiders. Very effective, tough running back. Rakidani stepping in along with Brody Bantolina to provide some oomph to the Raider rushing attack. This kickoff will be returned by Kaluna. He goes out of bounds, stopping the clock at one, sorry, 4.01 in the third quarter. Raiders leading at 27 to 10. Kai McKee jumped out in front with a 36-yard field goal. The Raiders got their first lead with a 37-yard touchdown run by Brody Bantolina, also in the first quarter. Extended that lead on a pass, 11-yard pass from Chong to Gaudi, 14-3. Mayava being flushed again, and he will throw that away. Good job applying the pressure by Wataru. <laughs> yeah, Iolani's pass rushers are very relentless. <laughs> Jedidaya Wataru. D -line, sorry, D-line rotating some guys in there. You got Isaiah Adams playing at the nose. All 5'9", 175 of them holding it down. And also on the left end, Devin Griffin, number seven. You see Wataru lining up next to Adams, and he does fill a gap. Penalty flags fly as Fuala Al has it. You see what the call is. A sideline warning against the Kaimiki Bulldogs. As I was saying, the Raiders took a 14 to three lead in the second quarter, and then a minute and 25 seconds before halftime, the Bulldogs cut into that lead on a touchdown pass from Mayava to Williams to make it 14 to 10. And now the Raiders have scored two touchdowns here in the third quarter to extend their lead. More whistles and flags to gonna get kind of key for delay. We do have the play clocks here at Eddie Hamada Field. Last week's game at IAEA 
or was it Wanalua was kind of tough. They have to kind of rely uh, yeah. on referee timing. I'm yeah. sure you're Their game clock wasn't familiar even working. With that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I mean, if they're going to have it at your fields, you know, you should have everything working. This is Mayava Griffin is chasing him and forces Mayava to throw it away toward the Iolani Raider cheerleaders. Aliyah Hagi almost got that one. And she's <laughs> telling people how close. And now she's reenacting it. Oh, uh, you guys don't get to see it on the on the screen. That pressure, it looked like almost they let him through to set up a screen, but they got in so quick that there wasn't even enough time for Mayava to get the ball off. Yeah, Coach Tengon, he on that left side of he they ran a, a twist there. So it opened it up. Good good scheme there. Asoa on to punt. Kick that one wobbly end over end, bounces inbound and immediately out of bounds. And the Raiders will take over at their own 44 yard line, leading it by 17, 332 to go, third quarter. Yeah, big possession for the offense here for Iolani. If they can march down and get another score, it kind of puts it. Uh, a little further away for Kamuki to catch up. They've been staying in the game up till now. Faumu Ina connects with Wailoa Manuel. He stutter steps, stays on his feet for a bit. Good game. Yeah, again, taking what they give him. They're having Pamuina sling the ball all over the place. I don't think he's handed it off yet. <laughs> Ichikawa in motion. The give is to Bandolina. He is stood up and knocked down short of the first down. Want to bring up third and short. We should give a tip of the cap to the Raider offensive line, Kilo Scanlon, Tristan Kim, Rain Posse, Chase Kato, Brandon Chin. The line is playing without Micah and Duha, who is sidelined with injury. Micah was last year's starting center, played the other previous games at left guard. And there's about a grand total of seven offensive linemen yes. on this team, so it's not a, it's not a deep position deep. for the Raiders. They've done a great job today. Yeah, Tristan Kim filling in today. Holding it down there, I think, at left tackle spot. His mom teaches in the lower school. He is a sophomore new to the varsity. 5'8", 187 pounder. Coach Ivan, you mentioned earlier that we just have a few 200 pounders. We don't want to count, but we can do it with one hand. <laughs> yes. We know that. So even more props to the coaches, to the players. Absolutely. Falmuina scrambles forward for another Raider first down. But yeah, the coaches get them ready, get the line ready as a unit to play together, prepare them well, and players that execute no matter what size they are. And that's why, like Coach, I mean, like Eric said earlier, that they're the you know, most underrated unit on the team. We have an injured Bulldog on the field. Our concern now is for him. The Kaimaki medical staff is out there tending to him along with the Iolani medical staff led by Charlie Gima, who in his who is in his, I think he said the other day, 36th year. Raider head coach Wendell Look is also there looking on, as is Kaimaki head coach David Tauto. Yeah, Mr. Gima, he's great. He's he was there when I was when I was playing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. He 
you saw a, a quick glimpse of a mystery Gima in that short video we played at the end of halftime, greeting Bobby Webster. When I saw that, I was like, yeah, put that in. That lot of alums will enjoy seeing you. Yes. <laughs> KJ Navarez is up on his own power, but limping. KJ running back, defensive lineman, sophomore. Our best wishes to him and hope he recuperates quickly. Raider cheerleaders right below us sent his their best wishes to KJ. And we are just about to return to action. With one minute and 40 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Yolani leads it 27 to 10. Samuel Faumuina in at quarterback. He gives to Hidani. Hidani has escaped multiple tacklers, and he's on his way into the end zone for a 35-yard touchdown. Brock Hidani. Back-to-back -to -back touchdowns for Brock, this time on the ground from 35 yards out. Yeah, nice power running up the middle, fending off some tacklers, breaking some tackles, and again, making those moves to the outside and showing that burst. And Ryan Sunata, number 19 on that side, ran his guy off and stuck with his block, that last block, so, so that Brock could get in there. Mason Mizuta in for the point after. This time it is up and through. So the Raiders extend their lead to 34 to 10. One minute, 21 seconds to go here in the third quarter of the Father Bray game. And the Raider marching band plays Iolani no Ka'oi. And there you see the varsity cheerleaders. Cheerleading program is state championship material repeated Burts into the HS, HHA, HHSAA, I'll get it right, HHSAA state championships in recent years. Great job by Coach Barbs and her staff. By Loa Manuel out to kick off for the Raiders. Unheld off the tee, <laughs> and that boot is at the one, returned by Coluna. He's got a hole that closes quickly. Isaac Ignacio there to make the stop for Iolani. Isaac, five foot seven, 145 pounds senior. Still, there's a little over a quarter left, but it seems it's going to be, might be an uphill climb here for Kamuki. I mean, they need to start passing the ball, but right now, Iolani's D-line is just pinning their ears back and making it hard for him to, to get time to throw. So see what happens. Shaden Molina lining up toward the middle next to Isaiah Adams. And Fulao escapes off the edge, and he's off and running. Oh, Fulao, that, my friends, is a 77-yard touchdown run. Or they can just run the ball. Yeah, <laughs> stick with their game plan. By Namoas Asuega Fulao. Yeah, good job by Kamuki for, you know, st sticking with it and... Uh, you know, and playing hard and staying in the game as best they can. That was a nice run. 
We kind of stuffed the middle on the alignment there with the defensive line, and he saw that and bounced it outside and found a soft spot. Kawamoto on for the extra point from the Bulldogs, and that is up and good. Extra point attempt by number 33, Kurt Kawamoto is good. All right, one play, and that took about 14 seconds. So that's the way they get back in it. Yeah, we'll see if Iolani's offense makes any adjustments as far as their tempo, if they stick with their their normal up tempo or slow it down a little to milk some clock, but you know, we're not into the fourth quarter yet. You know, Coach Ivan, not to give any secrets away, but the kind of that run pass option where you're calling two plays and see what the defense gives you. Does sometimes the defense take away the run and then you have to pass or how does that work or do you as a coach sometimes send in a play and say no this is a run we want to roll the clock or yeah so situations. yeah depends sometimes they'll just call it in and we just say well we want to just run this you know okay. yeah but the rpo you're usually looking at one or two guys mm -hmm. the quarterback's going to read that if that one or two guys uh get sucked in on the run then you look for the pass if they hang back then you can give off give the ball for the run Awamoto kicks it off, spins it over the head of Lana Kilape. It's kind of like the new version of the triple option that UH used to run back in the day and a lot of other teams where the quarterback's going to fake that dive up the middle or show it. You know, if the defensive end comes in for the dive, then they can run to the outside. That's an interesting thing for fans to know sometimes because, you know, as fans, sometimes you're watching a game at home or in the stands and you're saying, whoa, why are they doing that? Why are they running it? Or they're so far ahead, why are they throwing it? Well, sometimes the defense is forcing you to do that. And right. It's not necessarily the coach saying, do this. So it's kind of a kind yeah. of one of those inside football things. But as you guys as coaches are probably uh, know all about that's my Those wife. Those kinds of comments. That, that yeah. would be my wife. She says, why are we running right? Why are they running right up the middle? I said, well, you got to do that so you can run other plays. Yeah. If you so don't ever do that, the other stuff won't work. So do you tell her, the key on that play is the Mike linebacker. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And once in a while, those runs up the middle, you will score a bust through and score on a touchdown like we've seen today. So don't discount anything. A lot of times it depends on time and score. You know, we, we always kind of go by that. So sometimes we just want to run up the middle, yeah, just to run the clock. Yeah. Every play has an effect. Slowly, defenders will start creeping in, looking for something, and then that's when you go somewhere else, go something deeper. You know, third and long, you have a good situation, then defenders are allowed to. When you're in a predictable situation on offense, it allows the defense to do, it, do what they want. They can dictate it, right? And then on the flip side, when the offense is rolling, as a defense, you feel like you're on your heels and you're kind of reacting to everything. Mm -hmm. So. Back to football action. 58 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. Raiders have doubled up Kaima Key so far, 34-17. Kaumuina to Wailoa Manuel. Yeah, there's still a lot of time, so you know, we're not going to try and run the clock. They're just trying to run the offense. Well, again, taking what they give us, and they've been giving that five-yard hitch. Feeding another one. Noah Gaudi with a gain for a first down. As the third quarter will probably come to a close here. With the Raiders leading at 34 to 17. Thank you for joining us for this Yolani Live presentation. We'd like to thank some of the people that are bringing it to you. Our manager of media services, Dane Kurihara, engineered this three camera extravaganza and is directing it from the media services AV office over to our left. He's been assisted in the control room by Sadie Velasco.
of the recently graduated class of 2019. Thanks to our school videographer, Mitch Viernes, for his camera work this afternoon on the center camera. Also operating cameras here today at this uh, quite sweltering Kazuki Stadium, our Kennedy Chu, he is a senior. Bill Huang, class of 21, a junior. Sophomore Morgan Wheeler is here. Freshman Avi Gupta and freshman Derek Chui. Thank you guys for your assistance today. We could not do it without you. This is a toss ahead, this is a pass. That's complete to Cole Ichikawa and that will go for a loss. When you hear the uh, gameplay and our voices, that is due to the audio engineering handled by Mr. King's Kalohelani. Our spotter here at our location is Junior Braulio Aguilar, a new junior to our school. Good job, Braulio. Famuina. Pass off the hands, a little high, intended for Ryan Sunata. That'll bring about third down. And of course, many thanks to our boss in all of these sorts of productions, Director of Communications, Kathy Lee Chong. I am John Tamanaha, and joined by Mr. Ivan Suzuki and Mr. Eric Perkins. our resident football experts. Famuina, he's flushed, moves up in the pocket, will run, has lots of running room to the Makai side and goes out of bounds. His cheering section is right below here, right below. Mr. Suzuki. Good job by Sam. I mean, he had a couple guys open on the sideline. He didn't get to see because of the pressure and he had a nice run. Actually, when he tried to pull up and pass, to set up himself for the run, the guy came up and the defender came up and he went right by. Nifty footwork. Yes. Good deception there. Almuina in the backfield with Bantolina. Two receivers to either side. This is Bantolina. He gets caught by the shoelaces and dropped for a short gain. Helmet off by the tackler. Lana Kaluna, he'll have to come out for a play. He barely missed that getting outside. They brought six on that one. So once, if he could have gotten through that, he would have a lot of open field. Bringing, uh, yeah, now they're bringing five, six defenders. Bantolina running to the far side. He's got a first down and more. Readers finding some success with that. Is that kind of a jet sweep, but handoff type play? Yeah, that's just a little deception, faking the jet sweep, coming back with, with the run the opposite way. Linemen get a good angle and can get sprung. Yes. Yeah, try to get a little misdirection on the defense. So again, that first play that started off with Ichikawa getting there, he didn't get a lot of yards, but that sets up other things later on. Famuina with an option oh. look there. Old school Bantolina. option play, huh? There we go. Yeah, drew the defender to him and flipped it out with the left hand. I don't think we even have that in our playbook every year, but we ran it just now. That was good. Coach Ivan, is that an effort just to get that on film? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. <laughs> good job. Running an option. Now they have to prepare for it. Empty backfield, five receivers. Middle of the field is, is open. Low pass intended for Sunada, but Palmuina was pressured on that play. And knocked down. 
Be third down. And that's what the defense is hoping that they can put pressure, even though there's receivers open, which Sonata was. It'll rush the quarterback and throw off the timing. I think if he completed that, he probably would have walked in. Mm. Third and eight from the 31. Fawina has a man over the middle. That is Ryan Sunata, and he has the Raider first down. Yeah, going back to that drag play again, the receiver's doing a good job running the DB, DBs off deep vertically and dragging a receiver shallow to middle across the field in that open space. Yeah, that's where the, backer, the linebackers were, and they came up. Good job by Fawina to stand in there or take that hit so that he can get the playoff. He took, he took a really good shot there. <laughs> Riley Albano into the game. He is the flanker to the far side. This is Bantolina. He is going up the middle, lowers his shoulder, fights for extra yards. Brody Bantolina, another impressive run. 150 pounds, sophomore. And again, he almost went down, just put his hand down a little bit, regained his balance, and kept going forward for another five, seven yards. It's that balance again. If you're just joining us. He's going out right now, Brody Bantolina. And Brockidani comes in, but Brody Bantolina last year was a five sport athlete here at Yolani. Yeah. And he'll probably get his balance from judo or wrestling. Yeah, and he also participates in track and field and soccer in addition to football. This is Brock Hidani. He's fighting for yardage, held the ball out. Kaima Key is saying there was a fumble. Or at least the Bulldog bench is. Wow, that's a close call. I don't know if they blew that whistle before the ball got knocked out. Yeah, good fight for yardage by Hidani. Just risky when you have the ball out there like that. It seems they had four pro forward progress stop, so they're giving the ball the forward progress is. Yeah, good job by Kabuki's defense. You got to look for things like that at this point in the game. Try to force a fumble, look for turnover, strip the ball. Second and goal from the three. Under center, Faumuina. Gaudi in motion. Give to Brock Hidani. This time he does fumble, and a Bulldog jumps on it. Another play I haven't seen in a while with the quarterback under center for Iolani. So the Bulldogs will take over at their own two-yard line. That's not what Iolani wanted as a turnover, especially on the doorstep of putting that game away. Tough spot for Kamuki's offense here tucked back deep in their territory. Rialva takes the snap in his own end zone, gives it to Fuala Ao. He comes out of the end zone and is knocked down after some tough running by a bunch of Raiders. Wataru is in there, Murata. Seven forty to go here in the game. Raiders lead at thirty-four seventeen. I would say at this point, Kamuki's got to open it up a little bit more with the pass. Can't keep relying on the run too much. Penalty flags and whistles. Looks like we got a legal procedure. Yep, do we have to distance to the goal? <laughs> That'll push it back to the three. So it'll be second and nine. For our Date Street neighbors, the Kaimaki Bulldogs.
Mayava, strong pass, but that falls incomplete. Big fourth down here for the Bulldogs. They trail it by 17. Yeah, that was read quickly by cornerback Michael Shikata. Came up fast on the throw, made a play on the ball. Bulldogs are looking for a quick score, and they just ran a few minutes ago for a 77-yard touchdown through Fuala'au. So that is on their wish list here to get back into this game. Pass over the middle. That was knocked away. Good job by Wataru. Wataru, the guy applying the pressure earlier, deep in coverage on that play all over the field. Jedidaya Wataru. Big play. That'll force the Bulldogs to punt. Fa'asola's heel will be on the end line. Kamiki needs to be careful here. He has fielded a high snap. Gets that one away. He says Ko Ichikawa fields it over his shoulder at the 45. And he's knocked down. A penalty flag hits Micah Shikada in the back. He turns around to look what hit what hit me. Oh, <laughs> flag. What if he's wondering if it's on him? Yeah. That's yeah, not on him. Yeah. It was uh, <laughs> number five. Number five, Kamat. Michael Kamat hitting in the back. But those, those flags, you know, he is a little sore. He's too on. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. On those punt yeah. returns, a lot of them are set up for the returner to go to the sideline as the return team kind of forms a wall down the side, and they're trying to get the angle on the punt team as they run down and, and converge on the runner. If they don't get the angle, sometimes they clip them on the side or in the back. You just got to be a little disciplined on that. Stay off. Good job by Fa'asoa getting that punt away. 42-yard boot. Helped out a little bit by the penalty, so the Raiders will take over first and 10 at the Kaimaki 48-yard line. Jonah Chong back into the game. He gives it to Barak Hidani. Brock with a good run. Keeps that clock moving, gains about seven yards. Holds on to the ball, most importantly. I'm sure Coach Luke gave him a nice reminder about that. A gentle reminder. Absolutely. <laughs> a suggestion. <laughs> Two hands, son. Fake the give to Hidani. This is Chong. He is retreating, looking for someone. Throws it in the direction of Cole Ichikawa. Smart. Just kill the play. Uh, don't take that sack. On second and three, you don't want to come up with a sack right. there. Good, smart play. Yeah, third and three is still a good down to have as the offense. You can run a lot out of your playbook on this. Hard for the defense to see what's coming. Empty backfield for Jonah Chong. Three receivers to his right, two to his left. He'll sling it to his right. That one went through the hands of Blade Pfeiffer Kekoa. Almost made its way to Cole Ichikawa. Yeah, he read that one all the way, came up, made a good play on the ball on that one. One step earlier could have been a pick six for Kaimuki. I like Blade. He goes by the nickname Boo. <laughs> he already has a cool first name. Fair catch by the Bulldogs. So that'll stop the clock at 548 after the Raider punt. Good job by the Kaimuki defense. Stopping Ilani's offense in a timely fashion and get, the, get their offense the ball back with some time and, and stay in the game. Some new defenders into the game for Iolani. The nose guard will be number 99, Braulio's residence hall mate, Peter Reed IV, 6'2", 190-pound senior. 
from American Samoa. Yep, first time playing football. It was nice to see him come out for the summer. He's a good kid, learning a lot about the game. This is Fuala'au with it. Good game for him. Yes, a lot of the subs are in. Sprinkled in there. Peter Reed, you know, in his first game of American football, he was on the Big Island against Kamehameha Schools Hawaii. Batted a pass into the air that went for an interception, Shane and Molina, and also had a fumble recovery. Yeah. Johnny on the spot. You give Peter a year or two, he's going to fill out that 6'2 frame. He's 190 now. I wouldn't be surprised if he's 275 and athletic. He's a pretty athletic kid. He's in under that play right there. There you go, Peter Reed with the stop. Number 26 also there. Casey Bell to slow the runner down. He will graduate, though. He will fill out that frame, but he is a senior. He will be among the first boarding students to graduate gonna, from this school since 1959. He, he's going to be some recruiter's little secret. <laughs> yeah. Someone's going to see him and not tell anybody. Absolutely. Mayava, pass complete over the middle to Kalana Kaluna Jr. We've called his name a lot today. Starting we've, Sakashita we've said with the, the middle tackle. a lot, too. Right. Both teams. A lot of success over the middle. Gain of 12 yards and a first down on the completion to number four, Lana Kaluna Jr. Nicholas Yim, number 45, also into the game at linebacker, as is Ryan Ceruta. They are both sophomores. You also see Vincent Jones here, defensive back. Closest to us on the near side. Vincent is a 5'10", 165 pound junior. Second year on the varsity. Mayava, another pass over the middle, this time off the hand oh. of Williams. Yeah, if he can hold that one, he had some room to run. Maxin Miyashiro is also in, a defensive back. Way over there on the far side. Casey Bell, 26, in at the Raver, Rover, Raider nickel position too. He has some game experience in him. Maxin's father, Gary, class of 85, was a running back for Coach Eddie Hamada here at Iolani. Mayava's pass complete to Fuala'au, and he's off and running. Escapes a couple tackles until Ryan Saruda pushes him out of bounds, but not after a big gain out to the Raider 30-yard line. Don't look now, but the Bulldogs are threatening. They are down 17, just under four minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, good backside screen, had the defense going one way, came back to the short side of the field, and he's a big load to take down, hard runner. Mayava, complete. To Eason, Nico Eason, junior. We'll bring up second and four at the Raider 24. Mayava, lots of time. He's pointing to receivers. Chooses to come over to the far side and completes it to Fa'asoa. Yeah, a lot of time to pass on that play. Makes it hard for the DBs to cover him that long. Someone usually gets open, finds an opening in the, in the coverage. Pick both 10 yards and a first down on the completion to number 44, Jonah Fahasol. Good for you, Lonnie, to get a lot of these guys in on defense with a roster. And with the roster size, you're going to lean on, on 
a few of these guys throughout the season. It's good to get them playing time now. Fa'asoa hustling to get off the field. This give is to Fuala'au. Wataru there for the Raiders to slow him down and the rest of his friends, including Isaac Ignacio, come to close him up. Good job by Wataru. I don't know how he does it sometimes. All 150, 151 pounds of him, but he, he sneaks in there. He goes hard, gets his nose in there, slides through and makes plays. Sets that edge, causes the runner to bounce it outside while the other defenders come up to help. I mentioned Isaac Ignacio. That name might sound familiar to some Raider fans. Brother Noah, class of 17, was an all ILH second team all-star at linebacker. Their mother, Susan Ignacio, class of 87, is the, one of the team moms. They were out there today manning the wonderful concession stand that featured pastelli stew, homemade chili, homemade baked goods, terry burgers, hot dogs, and probably most importantly, cold drinks. But, but the food was fabulous. Yeah, too bad they couldn't bring some of them. Yeah, I, I did not get any of that. Oh, okay. <laughs> it sounds great, Well, though. Mr. Perkins, you, <laughs> I got you showed up with five yeah, minutes yeah, of spare. I got, yeah, I got it right in time. Coach. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they'll have but some. But yeah, maybe, maybe somebody. Yeah. No, it, it, it does sound good, though. We have food for you after the game. We do. That is not a joke. Okay, that was part of the deal, right? Check in with me. I like how Kaimuki is still playing hard to the end, though. Credit to these guys. Shout out to all the team moms, though. That's a lot of work. Unsung heroes of all these Raider teams and everybody's teams. 2.58 to go here in the fourth quarter. Mayava lost a pass to the far side corner. And that is brought in by number eight, Kobe Moanu Anu for the touchdown. Yeah, Maximir Shio frustrated with himself on that play. He was in good position. He was in good position right there. Just timed his jump a little off. He'll make that play later. Good to learn from that. Yeah, and Mayava, like I said, Man, he's incredible. That was a guy in his face, and he just threw it to a spot. Nice play. Kawamoto adds the extra point, so that cuts the Raider lead to 10, 34, 24. There's always a chance. We'll see how they play this, if, the, uh, on, if they go for onside kick or not. With 2.51, down 10. Yeah, they might have to. They only have one timeout left. Uh, we, as we said in the outset, this is a non-league game. We thank Kai McKee for coming across Date Street to play the Raiders in this game so that we can have our Father Bray Memorial Football Classic. Um, because of the new OIA ILH Alliance, most, if not all, of our league games are on the road or at the stadium. We do get homecoming here. That'll be September 27th against Radford. And just to explain a little bit, in this alliance, the Raiders are competing with Damien in ILH Division I to make the state tournament. So when you look at the the standings, the Raiders are interested and the Damien Monarchs are interested in being ahead of the one another to advance to the state tournament. Yeah, and they look good. Oh, there's onside. But whistles and flags. Damien had, Damien had a big win yeah. against Waipahu last night. So that, that, that shows that they're going to be right up there. Well, they move that back. Yes, absolutely. Damien did beat Waipahu last night, the defending D1 state champions, the team that Kealoni lost to in the state semifinals last year, 30-21. to 21. So Damien now is 2-0 and in league play. Yeah, the front line, uh, I think, needs to be read. I, that was going to be a close play if they weren't off sides.
So the Bulldogs will try it again. The ball must go 10 yards. They will kick it many more yards than that. Over the shoulder catch by Lana Kila Pei. And here comes Lana Kila toward the middle. And now he'll try to score him loose. Can't do that. And he is brought down at the 30 yard line. Raiders will take over there with 2.41 to go. As I was saying earlier about Damian and Neolani fighting for position in that two-team standing, that head-to-head -head matchup will be huge, obviously, at Aloha Stadium, September 20, Friday night, 4.30, Friday evening. This is Brock Kidani. Tough man to bring down. Gains a tough couple. Yeah, right now Iolani just wants to hold on to the ball, eat up some clock, hopefully get a first down, move the chains, and they can seal it. Gain of two yards on the handoff to number one, Brock Hidani. In case you were wondering, the head-to-head -head against Damien is not a tiebreaker. A tie that requires a state, that, that determines a that state birth, a tie cannot be settled via tiebreaker, so a game would have to be played. Brock Kidani tackled in the backfield by Kaluna. And number 55, Uatasi Komiti. So with 1.35 to go and the Raiders leading it by 10, they are milking the clock, yeah. trying to move to three and one on the season. They will remain one and one in league play. Jonah Chong is brought mm. down for a sack. Then he threw the ball and he is gonna get called for, I believe, intentional grounding. That was close. <laughs> yeah, what do you think, Ivan? Yeah. Uh, 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 number six, Manuel. Waloa Manuel was in the area. Yeah, he was in the area. Chong wasn't down yet. As long as they receiver in the area. So the key there is loss of down and the yardage. So that means the Raiders will punt. Now, if, the if there's a receiver not in the area, the quarterback has to be outside, outside. the tackle, and the ball has to get to the line of scrimmage, right? Right. Throw it away. But Manuel's there. It's all right. Quick snap by Iolani. Wailoa Manuel gets off a booming kick. That sails and hits at the Kaimaki 40 and rolls to the 35. Tremendous clutch punt by Wailoa, who's done a bit of everything. Pass catching, place kicking, punting. He is a junior, so he'll be around for yet another year. 56 seconds to go. Bulldogs will attempt to come up with something quick here. Same thing with Kaimuki's punter and all around guy, number 44, Fossil. He's done, a, done it all today too for them as he's earned his you know, deep breaths that he's taken on the sideline trying to catch up. Whistles and flags. I mentioned that the Raiders are one and one in league play in their league opener at Moanalua. Very exciting game, came down to the last play, literally field goal by the Menehune, won at 21 to 20. This is Mayava, he escapes pressure in the backfield off the hands of Williams, almost an interception. Trevor Kahn was crossing paths with Sterling Sakashita. 
That Wanalua game was quite a battle. And then the following week, the Raiders went to Aea and defeated Na'ali'i 31 to 10. Wanalua is a tough team this year. And uh, I was looking at the schedules and Damien plays Wanalua, I believe, in their last regular season game. So that might be oh, yeah. um, one that we are hopefully looking at the out-of-town scoreboard. Right. Mayava scrambles and runs out of bounds. Raider defenders seem content to keep him in front of them. Yeah, good coverage. Yeah. Good coverage. Mayava couldn't find anything. He had some time. Amaki's receivers just kind of stood still, though, once he scrambled. You know, in that situation, you probably want to find some openings. Isaiah Adams again in at nose guard. Played offensive line last year. Number 95 out there. Flags down, but Bulldog completion near a first down. But whistles on the clock stopped with 14 seconds to go. Hmm. They will have to sort that out. Isaiah's dad, Christian Adams, my classmate. Played football for Iolani, played offensive line. The hardest thing is not calling them their dad's names. Hmm. <laughs> Isaiah, five foot nine, 175 pound junior. And he's going up against 300 pounders, most, most downs in the previous games I've seen. Give these credit, give these kids all the credit in the world as time expires. The Raiders win the 56th annual Father Bay Memorial Football Classic over the Kaimiki Bulldogs, 34. 24. Yeah, great play game. Um, you know, just in the middle middle quarters, Iolani took control a little bit and got ahead and Kamaki, all those valiant effort to come back. It's a little bit too big of a lead. But I think both teams will do will do well this season. Both teams are are well equipped to make a run in their respective divisions. Absolutely right. Kaimiki Bulldogs will be a force to reckon with in Division 2, and the Raiders hopefully in Division 1. Many tough games to play coming up as Coach Look and Coach Tautofi exchange handshakes at midfield, and will be followed by all of the players from both schools yeah, good game. I'm just, again, high school sports, I'm impressed. Both coaches did a good job with their programs, you know, clean game, hard-fought game, good sportsmanship. That's the main thing, you know. Absolutely, and come out and support this team, this Iolani varsity football team and all our Raider athletic teams here in the fall and spring and the winter seasons. This football team will take next week off and then they will be in motion for several weeks thereafter. Beginning with next week's game at, oh, sorry, not next week. They have it, but next week off. Friday, September 6th at Kailua. Then there's three stadium games and homecoming on the 27th of September within that next mix. And then the regular season ends at Castle on October 11th. This new alliance has been really fun. All the games are played really competitive, lots of fun to watch. Come on out and support this team. Some of the games I will tell you will be on OC16, particularly from the stadium, but come out, show that Raider Nation pride so that you can support the team and be seen on TV, and it's a lot of fun. Good job also today by the Raider marching band and the Iolani dance team at halftime, and congratulations to the Father Bray honorees, Mr. Walter Luke, class of 53, Mrs. Sari Uechi, class of 86, and Mr. Willie Keola Jr., class of 73. 
We want to thank our hard-working Iolani Live crew and the good folks at the Iolani Physical Plant and the Radio Athletic Department for their assistance in setting up our broadcast locations. We're all over the place here at Kazuki Stadium and Eddie Hamada Field. That's all directed by our manager of media service, Dane Kurihara. He was helped out by Sadie Velasco, class of 19. Also Mitch Viernes on the camera, our school videographer. He were also supported on camera by senior Kennedy Chu, junior Bill Huang, sophomore Morgan Wheeler, freshman Avi Gupta, freshman Derek Chui. Thank you for joining us, particularly in your new roles. School starts on Monday, but already making a big, pick, big impact here at school. Audio engineering handled by Mr. Kingsley Kalohelani today. Our spotter up at the location, Junior Braulio Aguilar, Junior from Mexico City. Thank you, Leo. And of course, our boss, Director of Communications, Kathy Lee Chong, who oversees all of us. And so on behalf of the students, faculty, and administration of Iolani School, we'd like to thank you also for joining us today for wherever you were in the world. And special thanks to Head of School Timothy R. Cottrell and his administration for supporting these live webcasts. And Dr. Cottrell was sitting right behind us along with his wife, Lisa. It's good to have them up here in our support team. And so for my partners here, Ivan Suzuki and Eric Perkins, this is John Tamanaha saying good night, everybody. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs>